Hello and welcome to this uh, introduction to perchance for RPGs. So what is perchance? Well, it says here that perchance is a platform for creating and sharing random text generators. And as you might imagine, that is pretty useful for RPGs. So for example, there's this Nave character generator. And if you click this button here, you will generate out a random character, random background, random misfortune, personality, etc. So it can be used for that. Here's another generator for Steel Forged. It's a hack for Iron Sword and Star Forged. And you can roll on each one here. So for example, let's roll a random place. And we got the Flame Song Hails. Uh, we can roll for different region names, different types of rumors per region, uh, building protected plagues. So you can build quite a lot with this and you can kind of see how it can be useful for RPGs. Personally, I'm using it for my hex fill procedure, which is a way for me to create the hexes for my upcoming hex crawl really easily. So what we have here is a general statement like animal behavior plus strange tutor and a oracle result, which is like want and witness. So if I randomize that, I get magical component plus strange tutor and hunger plus prophecy. So that gives me an initial spark to come up with stuff. And as you might imagine, that can be pretty useful. So I am going to go over the basics of how to use perchance, but there's an excellent tutorial for it. Uh, and if you click that, you will go through all of the basics of how to use it. I'm going to go through some of this, but I'm not going to go through all of it. I just primarily want to highlight what is most useful from it for RPG stuff. So that being said, let's kind of jump into it. So, um, there's this button right here which says try this example. So we're just going to click it. This from the front page. So there we go. So minimal example. So your pack contains item, item, and item. So this here is the code editor for the example. And it's pretty easy to modify. So you can, for example, change this to, let's see here, skull and slime, sure. So your purse contains slime, slime, and slime. Slime, skull, and skull. Slime, slime, and skull. So you can see that it will take from this kind of section here and put it into here. So this is what's called a variable. So it's kind of like a bag that can hold other things. But that bag can also hold other bags. So for example, you can click enter on here, hit tab, so that you're in the correct indentation spot. And you can write body part like that and then you can create a new bag or variable so to speak and you can start adding stuff in so you can do for example head liver lung okay this is getting a bit morbid but uh you get the idea so for example your backpack contains a lung skull and slime so what it did here is that it opened up the item got a body part opened up the body part and got lung. So you can kind of see how that can kind of work. You can also replace stuff with uh, these curly braces, which can allow you to place in a randomized variable directly within the text. So for example, you can say your backpack or bag contains this, this, and this. So it will always be either bag or backpack. Okay, so that's all well and good. But let's say I wanted to make it a lot more likely for body part to appear. How would I do that? The way you do that is by doing the caret symbol, which is um, above the 6 on my keyboard. And you put it at the end of the line and you put a number that indicates how much more likely it's going to be. So for example, if I put 4, it's going to be 4 times more likely for there to be a body part. So if I randomize that you can see that body parts come up a lot more so that's the basics of it with this you can already make quite a lot of stuff but let's say you wanted to know how somebody did something so let's use my hex fill procedure as an example here if i click a bunch of times you can see here that it has fort population of 95 so how did i get it to roll a number so if you don't know how somebody did something you can go to edit in the top right here and it will show you the source code for that. And you can see that I imported a dice plugin. So 
that's how I got the population to kind of be randomized is I just use this dice plugin here. So you can do that for any generator. So for Steelforged, you can hit edit and it's a lot more complicated, but you can learn quite a lot just from like looking at other generators. And that's actually how I would recommend you learn more about perchance. You just find generators that do what you want and then just look at their source code. So if you want generators to look at, there's this uh, list of random generators right here and they give a bunch of examples and uh, these are the most popular ones and that allows you to learn just from example. I thought I'd end off this video with a very simple example of how I'd make a random character generator. So I'm in an OD&D game right now which is based on ancient Persia and it's called the four corners of the world so I'm going to put four corners character generator in title which should change the top part and I'm going to change the output completely. So for the stats, there are Strength, Intelligence, Dexterity, and Charisma. And you can see it's all in one line. So in order to put breaks in between, you just put a BR, which is just HTML. So I can just put that here, here, here. And okay, so we got that. Now we need a way to roll the dice. So as I said before, for my Lost Vestige hex fill, I use a dice plugin, so I'm just going to copy that in, put it at the top. And by the way, if you want to know more about this dice plugin, you can just Google dice plugin perchance, and the first result should be this page here, which will tell you how to use it. But it's basically used like this. So I will just roll 3d6 by doing this. Square bracket dice 3d6 and that will give me a strength score. I'm just going to do that for the rest of these, like so. And we got a random generator for the stats, at least. Hey, an intelligence of 17. That's not bad. So I'm reading the description of the character generator that my friend put down, and he said each character starts with an appropriate pair of clothes and 3d6 times 10 silver pieces. So I'm just going to put that at the end here. Uh, 3d6 times 10 silver pieces. Um, let's see here. 3d6 times 10 silver pieces. So that'll just be dice 3d6 and then times 10 like that. And then silver pieces. You start with this amount of silver pieces. And that's good to go. It's probably not the best way to format it. I think there is a way to actually interpret new lines as new lines in the page. But fuck it, I think for a simple example like this, this is fine. Even if it is a bit ugly. So, the next thing we want to do is we want to add some backgrounds. So, my friend has a list of backgrounds and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste that into here. I'm not sure how it's going to be formatted, but we will see. Oh, it's formatted pretty okay. So, we're just going to tap that out and we got our backgrounds right here. So, we got Petty Noble or Smuggler. Okay, so we can just add that here. You know what, I am actually going to structure this a bit better because I can't stand to look at this. Uh, okay, I'm just going to put this into his own bag like we talked about, like the variable. Um, and we're going to call that stats. So we're going to just put stats here. I'm going to put this into a bag called silver. It's a variable, but I've committed to calling it a bag. I'm going to put that there. And that's a lot easier to look at. So I'm just going to write down, you start with the backgrounds, background and background. So it says here there's an error and the error is pretty obvious, but this is a ch good chance to point out how to actually figure out what error it is. Like it says click here. So your the expression background return nothing. And the reason for that is Instead of background, we put backgrounds for the name of our variable. So we can just delete that and it will work. So there is another problem here though. Let me see if I can get it to randomize that. There we go. You start with the backgrounds bailiff and bailiff. So as you can see, it doesn't actually use up that background. It can just give you double backgrounds. So one trick that you can use for this is... I'm not going to explain it in full, but you can essentially create a variable here called t, 
and make this a consumable list. And what that will do is that if you put T here as well, it will make it so that it will only choose unique backgrounds. So I can just put a bunch here, you know, and it will just only pick the unique ones. So there's an easy way to test this out. We can just erase out most of this and it should just give us these. So Barber Surgeon, Patty Noble, Grave Robber, Fisherman, and I'll just get a randomized collection of those. That's fine. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to remove that. So that's going to give us two unique backgrounds every time. So one last thing is that they also wanted a way to be able to add modifiers to their character. So I'm just going to create a new line here and this is going to be modifier. I'm going to create a new variable here, modifier, and we're just going to paste this in. And just to make this a bit prettier, modifier, and there we go. I am going to bold out some of these. Um, you might have noticed by now, but you can basically use HTML in this. And if you're not familiar with HTML, it's very simple to learn. Um, but yeah, you can pretty it up any way you like. So I'm just going to do that. There we go. Okay. One last thing that I forgot to mention. If you hit save here, you can actually go to settings, uh, change the URL, and you can actually change the URL of this generator. So I'm going to change this to four corners charge in. There you go. Set new URL. And now if I remove this edit part, delete that, I can just link this to my friends and they can use the character generator just straight up. So it's very useful for that. So yeah, this was just an introduction to perchance for RPGs and it's just a push to show you how simple it can be to make something like this for your RPG campaign, whether it be for solo or for group games. I hope you found it useful and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.